Hi, my name is John Reznikoff, and I'm president of University Archives. Here I have a group of letters and documents purportedly written by Abraham Lincoln, and I'm going to go through them with you and tell you a little bit about them and tell you what the value of such an item would be. The first item is a letter of dated 1862, September 2nd, Executive Mansion, as President, signed at the bottom, yours as ever, Abraham Lincoln. Talks about a chaplain, has some interesting content having to do with a regiment. And a letter like this um, would probably fetch somewhere around twenty to forty thousand dollars in today's market. Here we have another letter, and it's not in the best condition, and it has what we call a free frank on the front, and that's how it would be sent. And it's signed at the bottom, partial letter, has condition issues, something like this would probably be about ten thousand dollars. The third item is just a free frank, dated September 2nd, 1862, but it's written to George Meade, who was head of the Army of the Potomac. Something like this would fetch probably 7,500 to 10,000. Here we have a very popular Let This Man Take the Oath of December 8th, 1863, signed A. Lincoln, December 12th, 1864. These are pretty well known on the market, and what these were were something that allowed a Confederate prisoner to rejoin the country, so to speak, and to take an oath of allegiance to the United States after the Civil War or after hostilities had ended, and also during the war, if they were captured, they would be sent home if they would take this oath. This would sell for about seventy five hundred to ten thousand as well. Finally, we have something having to do with emancipation. Uh, it's a printed commentary, and it's signed at the top, A. Lincoln. This item, because of its content, might be as much as $100,000. So now that you've looked at all these great items, guess what? Only one of them is authentic. The rest are forgeries. And the winner is this Let This Man Take the Oath. And I could talk a little bit about why this one's genuine, but what I'm going to do instead is talk about why the forgeries are forgeries. One thing you notice about this letter is that it's very, very neat. Lincoln never wrote that neat. It's almost painterly. And Lincoln had an up and down quality to his handwriting. And you could see the difference. Also, take a look at the ink. It looks a little washed out. Also, the paper is no paper that I recognize as being Executive Mansion paper. So I'm looking at a lot of things on this particular one. This one, again signed A. Lincoln, an, all, another fake, has an attestation to it being authentic dated from 1924. That always scares me. And this particular item um, is not what I consider to be a great forgery. One of the things that really kills it is these markings, and being a philatelist, that means stamp collector, I know that these markings were produced long after 1845, and they're not authentic. So if you have fake markings, everything else is fake. Uh, again, the signature, the ink is not dark enough. It's not the same quality of ink from that period. The paper, you could learn a lot by holding up the paper to the light and looking at the watermark not authentic. Beware. This free frank letter was executed by a forger named Joseph Cozy. And Joseph Cozy actually used to trade his works for drinks. He was a real drinker. Um, and a lot of times he would write diagonal notes from somebody who supposedly received the letter. And that's a big giveaway, these diagonal notes. Um, Again, I said the free frank would probably be 7,500 to 10,000, but the letter itself could be 20, 30,000. And again, it's dated September 2nd, 1862. The paper looks wrong. Um, it looks like it was artificially aged. It just has a feel to it that's not authentic.
and it looks to me like the writing here and the writing here is the same even though it should be a different author. So you take all things into account. They have really prettied this up with a lot of extraneous writing to make it look like the real thing, but it doesn't fool me. Beware. Finally, we have this letter, which is even, this document is notarized in 1933 um, that it was from Abraham Lincoln and where it came from. Too bad, because this would have been a great item. Again, the ink is a little washed out, and uh, this is something that's an authentic, antiquated pamphlet that later a signature was added on to give it tremendous value. Not real. One thing that makes an authentic Lincoln signature is his signature bounces on several levels. Take a look at the way the O connects with the C. It goes down. And then the L and the N pop up again. And all his handwriting has a bouncy quality to it. It takes on several different planes. And you could see that in his writing. Whereas the forgeries, you can almost put a ruler under everything. That's one indication of forgery. Too straight, too painterly. Go to our website, universityarchives.com, or you can call me, 1-800-237-5692. I'm here to help you. Thanks a lot.